On today's episode, we're going to talk about the shopping cart theory and how apparently it's going to tell if you're a good person or a bad person. Let's talk about it. Hi guys, welcome to the battle plan. So today we're going to talk about this amazing theory that I found. I really love reading about these things. These people, there's some really intelligent people out there. And um, basically, I don't know if you've ever heard about the uh, shopping car car theory. If you never heard of it, don't worry about it because we're going to, I'm going to read it to you. We're going to go through this and we're going to also bring up some um, uh, arguments, whether for it or against it. And at the end of the episode, my goal is that Will this stand with you? Will it make sense? Or if not, will you just learn some what you can of it and then drop the rest? Because it's how we should approach life. We should always research and listen to different sides of a story or what does it mean to other people? And then at the end of the day, we should always reflect on what does that mean to us? What does that mean to me? And is it going to serve me? Does it serve me? Or should I just let it go? Or maybe just take the best out of it? And let the rest go. All right. So basically, here, guys, the um, the shopping cart theory is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self governing. Right. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task, and one which we all recognize as the correct, appropriate thing to do. To return the shopping cart is ob- objectively right. There are no situation other than dire emergency in which a person a person is not able to return their cart. Simultaneously, it is not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. Therefore, the shopping cart presents itself as the apex example of whether a person will do what is right without being forced to do it. No one will puni- no one will punish you for not returning the shopping cart. No one will fine you or kill you for not returning the shopping cart. I hope not. You gain nothing by returning the shopping cart. You must return the shopping cart out of the goodness of your own heart. You must return the shopping cart because it is the right thing to do. Because it is correct. A person who is unable to do this is no better than an animal an absolute savage who can only be made to do what is right by threatening them with a law and the force that stands behind it. The shopping cart is what determines whether a person is good or bad in society. Whew, that's a near full right there. So what does that mean? Well, you know, the way that I, when I first read this, right, previously, when it first came out and was all over social media, when I first read this, I was like, makes perfect sense to me, right? In a way, um, you, nobody's going to kill you. Nobody, you know, we've all been to the malls or to the grocery store and we've seen these shopping carts there or actually leaned against your car or somebody didn't care or is not going to, or looks at you and puts it right there. And, and, and walks. There's actually a guy on YouTube that goes around and he's called the, the cart narc. And he goes around and he says, sir, 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 or ma'am, 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 why aren't you returning this cart? And they don't care. And some of them get really angry. Other people actually come up and says, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. So how does that resonate with me personally? Well, the shopping cart theory actually goes with one of my, if not the leading kind of quote or mantra, if you want, uh, of uh, the way I live my life is basically with my military training, as you uh, you know, uh, I've served in, uh, in the Canadian Armed Forces for over 15 years. And the thing is, is how you do anything is how you do everything. So basically, it's about how do you act, respond, feel when people aren't there to judge you? How do you do everything, Right. Now, as I was growing up, it's very self-explain. Um, it's very self-explainable when you're talking about the military, how you do everything. And you, we, we had another saying that says, "Well, every, for the Royal Canadian Regiment, was never pass a fault, right? So if your button's undone, if you all these things, that means that 
If you're not taking care of the simple things, how can we trust you with the big things? And that to me is what it means. Now, there's people that are making counter um, arguments to this, obviously. Um, uh, some people are saying, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's some people are saying you're, it's showing that you care for the employees of the, uh, the grocery store. You acknowledge that if you don't put the cart away, someone, someone else will have to do it for you. Basically, it shows that you're not a selfish person. That's the description that this person is saying, right? Um, I actually uh, noticed that about garbage on the ground or when you go to a Starbucks or a place where, you know, a public restroom or something like that. It just turns into a mess. Why is that? Because all it takes is one little mess that somebody doesn't pick up and everybody just messes up on top of that mess. And that's how we actually get nice things turned to not so nice things like public transport and public areas and all these things, they just starts, you know, coming apart because people aren't taking care of them because it says, it's not my job, not my problem. Somebody else will clean it, right? And you got to remember that human behavior, human, basic human behavior is to find the path of least resistance. That's it. The brain is not designed to get you to achieve great things. It's designed to keep you alive, just to survive. Now, if you want to thrive, if you want to achieve great things, you need to be able to flex it like a muscle. So you need to learn new things, practice new skills, go out there and talk and learn from different people, read about different theories, read about different things. And at the end, you kind of compute all of that and says, this is who I'm gonna be. That's how we build an identity. So now to come back to this shopping cart theory, which I obviously you can see I really love it, is, um, you know, it just, it, what does that mean to you? I would like to know. If you want to comment down there, bring a counter argument. Some people say, no, it just, it's just a cart, right? It's just one of those things. And um, some people actually debunked it and all these things, which is pretty funny um, y y because they, they, they are also right. Um, when you think about it, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. It's just a shopping cart, right? It goes along with your standards. What type of person are you? Is, th is that important to you? Is that not important to you? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you leave the shopping cart there and everything. Some people might even think, well, actually, that creates employment for other people, right? You've heard that there. Well, if I don't leave my cart there, then they won't need the cart guy or, or the cart girl, right? Um, to bring it back to the, the, the cart corral or to bring it back inside the store. And uh, we have that mentality uh, around everything when we go to public places. Well, if I don't, you know, if we don't create garbage, there's no garbage people and there's no, you know what, we can pretty much talk ourselves into believing. It goes with our beliefs and values about anything that we do. So, um, I would like very much to find out how do you stand on this shopping cart theory. For me, it means how you do anything is how you do everything. And it's one man, one kit, basically. So you basically, if you take care of your three foot bubble, everything that's inside of that, then you're making, that's how we make the world better. That's how I believe it, right? How I operate. So if that means that if I don't bring back my cart, maybe I won't push as hard in my workouts. I won't finish the write-ups I need to do. I won't put that extra, uh, how should I say this, that extra pepper into my reports. Or, you know, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just take the path of least resistance and say it's good enough, right? Actually, that goes along, <laughs> this good enough thing is... Um, is, is very, it, it, it hits a nerve with me, the good enough mentality. Um, basically, when I was on my uh, paratrooper course uh, over in Canada, um, I had, we had one of our instructors, a sergeant, and he was the jump master. And basically, you know, we have to um, make sure our shoot is right. And then we got to pack our equipment and then really tie our snowshoes and because we are in Canada and our weapon and everything to our uh, rucksack and we got to make sure everything is in order and uh, 
inadvertently, one of the troops, one of the guys said, oh man, that's good enough. And the sergeant didn't even let that pass. He goes, I just heard this. And he goes, and then he, he talked to the whole group. He says, troops, never adopt the it's good enough mentality. That will get you killed. Right? What was he saying there? The way I interpret it is that it should be, you should be looking for, because we can never achieve perfection, but we should always strive for the highest standards, making sure that is as close to perfection as we can to make sure that this is all squared away because we'll be jumping behind enemy lines and everything, once we land, everything is going to go sideways because that's Murphy's Law. And, but if you have your equipment and everything in order, then the only thing you have to deal with is what's coming at you. Does that make sense? So that's what the shopping cart theory means to me. I'd be interested in what it means to you. So please, like, share, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Counter-argue, just be nice about it. And let's have a discussion about this shopping cart theory. See you in the next episode of The Battle Plan.